This is episode 294 of Aussie Tech Heads, and welcome, welcome one and all. How are we this week? Another big week in tech news this week, obviously with Apple's Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference, whatever they call themselves, and uh, that's been... Uh, been said and done so i wonder if anyone over here stayed up till 3 a.m in the morning to watch that i certainly didn't all right so let's get things underway eric how you doing hi glenn uh i'm well thanks and uh yes i didn't get up at three o'clock to watch that um i like apple products but i'm not a fool no 3 a.m is rather early <laughs> rather early mm, and 245 actually oh was it there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dear oh dear but um a few surprise, well, one very big surprise for me, but we'll get into that later. Uh, no Will tonight. Uh, Will's stuck at work fixing batteries or whatever he whatever he does over there. Sniffing, ba- sniffing battery acid. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, so he's yeah, replacing a lot of batteries. So good on you, Will. And uh, so, so yes, welcome, welcome, lounge, welcome to the loungers in live dot thesecrethub dot com. Always good to have you guys along live for the recording of the show. Uh, Skype, if you want to call in live, Aussie Tech Heads is the Skype handle. And I must say, I haven't mentioned the footy tip and competition for quite some time. But uh, yes, going strong. The the leaders, you know, people are overtaking each other in the in the different comps and. Uh, yeah, hopefully, I, did, I think I might have said we have a mid a mid season winner. I might do that. You might get so that lucky person might get the Britney Spears uh, Britney Spears CD. <laughs> so, so look out for that one. Woo hoo! You know what? <laughs> Britney Spears music CD genre tends to go together with football fans, mate. You got that right <laughs> on the head there. Oh, and then speaking of which, how can we go past that and not mention the state of origin? So go the Blues. Good work. Good work. Yes, it was good work. I watched the, I watched the whole game last night. On that link I much. sent you? That did work. Yeah. But first half I watched on there, and then second half the kids went to bed, so I got one of the flat screens, so that was all right. right. Well, that link, that link wasn't bad quality either, was it? No, it was okay. It was pretty good. It was, would have been standard definition, but hey, yeah, for good. a free stream. Yeah, not, not too arguing. bad. Yeah, not too bad. That was good. Uh, yes, uh, and also the video of the Tonight Show can be seen again on youtube.com forward slash the secret hub. And also the paper, we've got a tech newspaper, paper.aussietechheads.com.au. Various stories all around. Techwebcast.info. Thanks, guys. Replay of their show every week before our show. And episode 192 this week. Good on you, Brad. <laughs> I wrote it down. I listened to it. <laughs> I listened to it just at the end, and good on you. I remembered. So uh, 192, talking about web page hosting and all that sort of good stuff. All right. Uh, yes. yes, what else do we have to say? Um, that's about it. Might as well just get into the show. Yes, let's get into it. What do you want to start with? Well, I reckon we start with Apple. Obviously, that's the biggest news of the of the week. Yes, you know, the unfortunate thing about when Apple does anything, like, have a conference or whatever and make an announcement it just takes over the whole week's news cycle it's in the end there's not much else around no it does uh sort of dominate dominate and as i as i was saying just before the the big surprise like eric's going to talk about the the announcements that came out of the of the conference but the the big surprise for me was a non-announcement as everyone was expecting an announcement of the iphone 5 but uh wasn't anywhere to be seen that didn't surprise me that much. I knew they wouldn't. I, you know, because remember the last time. Generally, they they released them in June, July. Except for last year, they didn't release the phone until October. So, and every September they have their iPod launch and right. you know updates and refreshes. And that's when last year. That's when they did the phone. So, so they will do that again this year in September and to be on sale by October. I would say. Yeah, I guess because I reckon, like you know, we were doing. Well, I don't normally do the the rumor stories, of which there were. They're still obviously still circulating tonight, or and this today about the iPhone five. I saw this one, you know, nice black little shiny case and all this sort of stuff. But I mean, yeah. uh, look, the rumors were abound. You know, there's iPhone leaks, iPhone leaks here, iPhone leaks there. But you know, maybe Apple just wanted to shake it up. Who knows? You know, they must be just just there, just laughing, rubbing their bellies. And just going, what, look at all this free publicity. Isn't this great? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Isn't this well, great? Well, they're very clever in manipulating public relations and um, the media. They're very good at that. Mm. Um, you know, they don't manipulate it, manipulate it for evil purposes. But you No, know. but I don't reckon but, that um, – I don't think that it's, it's um, manipulation. I just think the media are just suckers, you know? Like, no, they're not suckers. They love, love a good story. But there's no, there's, there's, 
that, that's a, a rumor. Good non-story. Yeah, well, that's right. They're rumors. So I suppose at least they're reported as such. They're, they're reported yeah, as rumors. Well, that's right. Me, so. That's right. At least not, not, there's not many out there saying, "Oh, this is definitely what's going to be going on," because no one knows. Let's face it. Mm. All right. So what was announced at the uh, well conference? Firstly, before I get to that. Um, the the I think a lot I've been hearing a lot. This is not my view, but I do agree with this view. A lot of commentators have been saying that the reason they released iOS six um, now and not the phone is because it gives developers um, a few months to get their apps ready. Right. For iOS six, and mm. then they bring out the hardware. That way, all the apps are ready, and then you know everyone hits the ground running. The apps are ready, the software's ready, the hardware's ready. If they release the phone on the same day as they release the software. Um, you know, the, the developers are scrambling, thinking, oh, God, I've got to update, I've got yep. to do this. I've got to... So it's, I think that makes perfect sense to me, and I, I agree with that view. So iOS 6 was, uh, was, was launched, I suppose. That's the, that's the word for it. Yep. So launched yep, at, I, at... Yep. Yep, and how do, you, how do you like it? I have it here on my phone. And is it good? Or what's your, Look, your... to tell you the truth, it's a little bit... Unless it's just... Because it's the first beta. Yeah. Unless it's just a little bit slower on the first beta. Um, there's a couple of differences. The front page now, if you, um, I don't know if you can see that very well. No, I just tilt him up a Tilt it a little bit. Hang on, down, whoop, down. That's, that'll do. Oh, yeah. There's what? a little, there's a little. A ticker? Uh, other side. Oh, well, 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 there we go. Oh, and tilt. How about, how about <laughs> tilt it horizontally? Yeah, that's getting better. Yeah, that'll do. Right. So you see the weather, the weather there on top. The stock, stock thing. That's just the flick screen. So when you do this, it flicks back up. Oh yeah, right. Yep. Right, but the, I mean Android's got that too. And the only th the difference on the front screen, there's two little buttons saying tweet to face, tweet to t tap to tweet or tap to post for Facebook and, right. and Twitter. Right. Right. So you can tap straight from the front screen. Um, the other difference is, is when you're getting a call. Um, I think there's a picture of it down there, Glenn, on my, I think on my, um, oh. on my notes. All right, well, you keep you keep down. going while I get those. Um, there's a thing on page, it's called in the call rejection section. Did you see that also through the or through the week, obviously, but uh, it was iO six has already been jailbroken. Oh, that's not going to surprise me. No, they'll it's jailbreak pretty... that, but every time they push out an update, it. it it um, it locks the jailbreak and then they've got to develop another one. Mm. But, but you the, know, these guys have been doing it for years. So that, that's, the, that's yeah, the fine. sucky the sucky thing about this jailbreak is listen to this. It's got to your, um, uh, the 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 dev come hacker has, however, stated that a final version is still a long way off with an untethered jailbreak, which is one that doesn't you re doesn't require you to connect your device to your laptop each time it boots, is even further off. <laughs> <laughs> so he's jail. Oh, right, well done. <laughs> he's jailbroken system is uh yeah you got to tether he's got, it. He's got to jailbreak his own system. Yeah. So this yeah. guy Muscle Nerd he also hinted at the possibility of a a jailbroken iPhone 3GS would be able to use full GPS features again thanks to the new maps. Yeah. Well, see that that actually I'm glad you mentioned that because that's what I was going to mention that the um, iPhone the the new the new features of iOS six are only most of them are only available for the iPhone 4s and above right um, so for example the 3d rendering on your maps 4s and above right. um, what else is there the, the drive by the drive through I think they call it or fly drive or drive fly I can't or like I can't, I can't remember <laughs> what they call it now right. um, is only available 4s and above and if, if there's a jailbreak then um, that would be very good because that would enable normal and Siri yeah. as well. Siri is not available on iPhone four; it's just the iPhone four S. That's right. So, uh, so what? What are the? So, I've got, is that the picture you want me to show? Just of the devices. Actually, I'll send you. Can I send you this on a, on a chat? It's just the. Um, you might be able. You get this picture. It's just a. It's just a quick picture. Oh, the turn by turn directions. That's the other one. That's not available unless you've got iPhone 4s or above, which right. is really bizarre. Because it's, it's uh, you know the, the the what gets me is that the iPhone 4s um, processor is the same as the iPad, the current iPad, and that does turn by turn directions and 3D drive. But the 
the iPhone 4 doesn't. Yeah, so, you know, I don't know why that all is, but I suppose is that is this all? But I, iOS six, that's all. That obviously, everything's just included. Everything's just ducks guts. It's what? It's what? Ducks guts. What's that mean? Well, <laughs> you're the best. <laughs> you know, you got everything yeah. in there. You got maps. Well, and see, terms. see that, that. Look at that. Look at that map. Hmm. That's pretty good. It's very good. Yeah. yeah. Um. So that's the mapping section. You got turn by turn directions. I've got the map on the map on here at the moment. It's not that good. But I'm, they'll, they, and I'm sure they'll improve that, so that's not a problem. But that turn um, by turn is that just out of the box? Is that right? Out of the box, turn by turn directions. Yeah. Geez, that's going to upset a few uh, GPS makers. Well, apparently they've signed a license with TomTom, so oh, it's not okay. going to upset TomTom. No, <laughs> stuff the rest of them. <laughs> but the rest of them can go and get back. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, well, I've never liked the rest of them anyway. What's um, the other one? Has got oh, the other one it's got too is um, and this will. Uh, this will be in the states, and how f- soon it comes out here, we'll, we don't know. It does. It uses real time traffic conditions to calculate your ETA, oh, yeah, nice. time of arrival. Yep, yep, sweet. Plus, it'll reroute you if you if you wanted to, right? To to avoid avoid the traffic or an, or an accident. So, so how, that's pretty good. How is it going to know? Is it hooking up to the traffic? It's, it must be hooking up to something, and I think they're using it for um, real. Uh, what's your crowdsourcing? Like if someone will post traffic jam right. here and it's all collected. Oh yeah. At the same time, they're using satellites and all, all that sort of stuff. Because there is a, uh, a, a some sort of uh, traffic system in Australia, but at the moment you have got to pay for it, and your, your your device has to be able to connect to it as well. And it's yeah. Um, well, I've got I've got it in my car, but I haven't paid for it. All right. Because they want three hundred dollars. They want three hundred dollars a year. So what do you get for free? Nothing. I get it just put- the, the normal GPS. It in put, my car, it's built. It's built into the car. I, the car had it in. It's, it's you know built into the dashboard. Yeah. And as a CD, you you pop in the thing. The CD is just used for the the GPS system. And if you want the real time traffic, you got to pay extra. Mm. Yeah. Right. So, if, if, you yeah. know, when I bought it, and the thing's five years old. I haven't even updated the roads on it for five <laughs> years. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I like when I go through some going up to the sunny coast. There's this new road in, and yeah, yeah, you get halfway on the, the new road and on the on your little Tom Tom or Navman that I've got. Yeah, you're just in yeah. the middle of nowhere, just little dots yeah. going in the middle. Yeah, of nowhere. Well, you know, new housing estates and stuff like that, and you think, yeah. oh, this doesn't show up on my map. Mm. But I tell you, I've got that Navman, uh, and I. So I'm, I've sent you. I sent you another clip there in the chat. Um, the other thing it it does is FaceTime over cellular over, over your your cellular network now. Which it didn't, but it, again, it doesn't do it for iPhone four. Oh, only four S and above. Right. Let's see. What's this other one you've sent me? Um, the traffic one, the car one. Car the one. Map tra- the traffic. Hang on. We'll have a look at this one. Oh, here we go. Traffic one. Traffic, traffic, traffic. Um, how far down is it? And then yeah, the second one. Uh, the second one is the traffic one. Just you want to scroll a little bit, and then the one underneath that, I'll show you the good um, the phone phone aspect. What's that one? Oh yeah, we'll talk about that one. Scroll up. No, scroll up to that that phone one. Yep. Go up a bit. You got it. That one. Okay, that one there. Um, Sorry, I'm ahead of you. That's all right. I know yeah, which one you're you mean. Ahead of me. I know which one you mean. The one you mean, Jane Appleseed. Right. Um, see, the phone rings, and the, the, in the, on the, on the sort of left-hand side, first one, has the phone's ringing. And on the second one, you think, well, you slide to answer, and then this, the option comes up. Do you answer or decline? Yeah. Or reply with message or remind me later. Right? Right, yes. And so if you right, put reply with message, you click that, and then it says, I'll call you later. It sends them a text message. You know, yeah. like, I'm on the phone right now. I'll call you later. Automatic yes. text. That's brilliant. Mm. I think Android has had that though. I can do that. Yeah, on Android one. has had it for a while, mm. um, but it is good. What I like is the custom one. Uh, sorry, remind me later. If you click that, what happens was another option will come up saying, um, "Remind me when I get home." Right. Or yes. Good. Remind me when I leave this area. Yeah. Apparently, it's got this. This. Um, I don't know how they call it. It's got some. Some zone thing. So if you step out. Of um, it knows what zone you're in within six meters. If it's if so, if you're in a meeting room, for example, and you click remind me later, yep. and you step out of your meeting room, go back to your office, it'll remind you. 
Yeah, sweet as. Because I know yeah, so that's um, not bad. Look, I know there's a little thing, like, and believe it or not, I do, <laughs> I do use Lotus Notes, and uh, not for my normal email, just for work email. But uh, God knows why they've got it. But anyway, it's Lotus Notes, and uh, look, it's got a nice little feature in it that you can actually you, you right click on the email and you can say remind me in you know one to seven days or whatever. Yes, and yeah, yeah. It's yeah. so good. Like you can do because Outlook does Outlook does does that. Oh no, Outlook does only does it with. Um calendar reminders not with emails yeah because well i think like google should put that into their gmail because like instead of like dealing with it straight away or or you know or, or pushing it to a folder straight away you just go look yeah. just bring that back to me in seven days i'll deal with it then you know because yeah. you yeah. It might be something you want to do or read but but it's just you don't just want to do it now and you don't want to just file it because then you'll never get it and yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's a good little thing but uh, anyway google when you when you listen to this podcast bring that one in for me please now. Yes. Uh, yeah. So anyway, they, look, there's a whole lot of features. There's, they they mentioned, I think, six main features, and there's 200 others. Uh, so we're not going to go through that here. Go to the Apple website and just click on iPhone or iOS 6 preview, mm. and it's all there. So, um, yeah, I was just going to ask you, what other uh, announcements were there, like apart from the uh, iOS? Well, iOS is now. Was it on? Well, they the... did their well their Macs, the new MacBook Pros. They've they've dumped the 17 inch. That's gone. Right. Forever. So what's now bigger? No, not bigger. Yeah, they've got the twenty-inch laptop. <laughs> oh, okay, um, right. Yeah, sorry. No, they've done, they've it's third. It's they've got the MacBook Airs, eleven-inch <laughs> and thirteen-inch. Right. So they've they've I think they've upped their processor speed on that, but didn't Ret- they didn't um, up the price? Retinas. Um, MacBook Pros. They've got um, thirteen and fifteen only. Right. And in in with the fifteen. There's two, um, there's normal 15 i7, or where is it here? Go here, I've got to get on the store. I'm getting on the store here. MacBook Pro, here we go, select MacBook Pro. Okay. So um, they've got two, a 15 inch MacBook Pro, 2.3 gigahertz, or a 2.6, or a two, or a 15 inch 2.3 retina display, f- yep. 15 inch. Nice. And or a fifteen or a two point six gigahertz retina display again fifteen inch. Now the difference in price is, for example, let's compare the two point six gigahertz ones. The normal one with uh, i seven turbo boost, eight gig of memory, seven hundred and fifty gig hard drive, you know, hard um, graphics card, blah blah blah, two and a half Gs. But the same size retina display is three thousand two hundred mm. because um, it's all. Um, SSD. Yeah, SSD, right. right. Okay. So nice. 512 gigabyte SSD mm. on a retina display. So you're paying an extra 2532, gee, that's $700. You're paying extra to get the retina display and the SSD drive. Well, obviously, uh, Apple's pretty confident SSDs are the way to go. Because I remember. Oh, look. It's just a matter of time, really, isn't it? Yeah, because I. But it wasn't so long ago. I remember that they had like a a, a fairly finite life. You know, they say, "Oh, you yes. can only read write like a thousand times or something, or yeah. probably a bit more." Yeah. I'm not sure but, what the figure was. Yeah, I think it's it's now something like, uh, well, um, oh, geez, one hundred thousand read writes or something. Yeah, that's and a, I think now there's also the, 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 the I think they've built in like a format before you couldn't format them. Once they were gone, they were gone. Right. Um. Now I think they've built in the thing that you can like format it or something and so you can reuse it you know what start from your 10,000 again yeah i'm look, oh, i'm not sure yeah. about that but i read that somewhere that it's mm. um it's not 000. it's not um yeah it's not that um but it must be more than 100 though but anyway whatever the figure is it's got to be a large one and obviously well whatever it is apple obviously you know people yeah. will get these laptops every 3 or 4 years so they're obviously thinking that it's going to last at least that long yes yep uh, all right, so... So that'll be my next laptop, by the way, that 15-inch retina display. Right. Or if they come out with a 13-inch retina display, which I think they will, mm. not this year, maybe in one or two years, I'll probably see how this one's going. I'll probably go down to the 13-inch retina display, I think. Yep, yep. But um, I'm not due for a laptop. I only bought a laptop um, a year and a half ago, a Mac. Mm. So I'm not, I'm not really in the market for one right now. Now, I've, I've got a couple of Apple stories here, but uh, have you? did you have any more? Was there any more announcements? Well, you go ahead because oh, there's a whole bunch here, but you go ahead. Well, mine was just... sort of off off the announcement track. Mine were just yep. more general Apple, a couple of just general stories. Um, let's say, well, we'll start. We'll do this one. So Ping, iTunes Ping. We all know Ping. 
all, all uh, know and love oh, it. Oh, yes. Well, yeah, it looks like they're going to ditch it. Yeah, there's been reports that uh, uh, Ping, which debuted in 2000, September 2010, uh, looks like it's at its day. It's uh, source unnamed sources, so God knows if that's going to be right, but who uses Ping anyway? So fair thing, it's probably no, right. I didn't. I signed up to it and I thought, this is pus. Yeah. How can you use a social network within iTunes? What a load yeah. of crap. So the report noted that Ping, which runs on iTunes 10.6.3 and the I.O. S6 beta will be gone with the software's next major release, which expected this uh, autumn, which is now this fall. What's fall? Yeah, fall is fall now. Fall is our sp- their fall is our spring. spring. So in the spring, so September. Uh, yeah, basically so in time for in time for five. iPhone five. After Ping has finished, the, the Apple will focus on partnering with Facebook and Twitter. Which looks like uh, as that uh, which, as which Eric, like they've already done. Yeah, it looks like they've already done from the home screen there. Early this week, Apple announced that it's integrating Facebook into its operating system software. At the developer conference, Apple said Facebook will be integrated into the iOS software that runs the iPhone and iPad, and as well as the other latest OS X version mountain line. So that's uh, that's that little fella. Now, yep. uh, the the Apple 4G, the iPad 3 4G saga continues uh looks like oh, it yes, looks right. like it's coming to a head but it is uh finally coming to it look i don't think that there's much of a an issue to tell you the truth like oh it's just this litigious yeah you know, bloody cry society that's right because look, uh, I, look i forget the ins and the it's outs it's a 4g tablet they're not lying just mm. because it's not available in australia doesn't make it illegal to say so no, but uh, but i think even though that they they said it they they weren't advertising it as 4g over here I'm not sure what the... I can't, I can't yeah, I can't remember, remember now either. That was a while ago. But anyway, Apple has asked presiding judge Justice Mordecai Bromberg hmm, last week in the federal court in Melbourne to accept its proposed settlement of $2.25 million for advertising the latest iPad as a 4G-capable device under a settlement with, with the Australian competition Watchdog. In addition to the penalties, Apple would also contribute 300000 to the ACCC's legal costs. An Apple spokeswoman confirmed the company would accept the settlement pending acceptance next week. So it looks like that's going to be all said and done for them, but it's probably going to be a, a ripple around the world because there's a lot of other countries that are also yes. up in arms. They've jumped on the bandwagon. Why wouldn't you? And, yes, I can't see why they can't just put a little 4G Australian chip in there. What's, why, why would that be so hard? But anyway. Oh, well, I think it's the frequency more than anything else. They probably well look that'll happen just a matter of time. Yeah, but like people have just got to relax. But what's in a frequency? <laughs> what just a little turn of a screw? I don't know. <laughs> no, look, I don't think it's that simple. <laughs> well, bloody should be. Yeah, you tell them. <laughs> ring up Conroy. <laughs> I'll ring it right now. Now, um, did you have any? Do you have any more announcements? I've got one more. I think. Oh, well, just a quick one. Mountain Lion, the next operating system, will come out in, um, I think, our spring as well, um, and for. T- Twenty nine dollars. Nice, that's good. Hmm. That's uh, so. Uh, I did have it loaded on my system a few months ago. The developer preview. I took it off. I didn't like it because I think it's a bit too buggy, and I didn't want to put it on a normal machine I use every day. Hmm. So, but I will put it back on once um, once it's a full release because yep. it's pretty good. It's yep. pretty good. Yep. All right, and so my my last little Apple story here is now Apple has removed quite silently, but I suppose they're not going to make a big deal about it anyway, are they? Like, who makes a big deal about changing web pages? But anyway, they've removed the more than more secure than Windows claims from the website. Now, as you can, if I've you, never seen that, have I, have I seen that? Yeah, well, if you have a look at the well, it's not there now, but if you choose to look at the Wayback Machine, oh, that one, um, yeah, why you love a Mac, yep. Yeah, so as you can see, it's uh, there's little, there's no pictures on this on the pay, on the Wayback Machine. Must, they mustn't capture pictures, but anyway, uh, it says uh, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't get PC viruses. So Apple recently changed the wording in in the Why You'll Love a Mac section of its website, removing long-standing claims about Macs being more secure than Windows PCs. So, mm. Mm, so Apple used to say a Mac isn't sus- susceptible to the thousands of viruses plaguing Windows-based computers, thanks to the built-in defences in Mac OS X SX that keeps you safe without any work on your part. But sometime in the past few days, the Apple changed the message to read: "Built-in defences in OS X keep you safe from unknowingly downloading malicious software on your Mac." 
Yeah. There you go. But well, it's just, yeah, only because they've had those recent issues with. Um, well, it's only because that's they're getting the Macs are penetrating more. They're getting more popular, and there's more value yeah. for the for the nasty people out there to, uh, you know, especially with all this um, BYOD things happening. You know, bring your own devices mm. to work and all this sort of stuff. Yep, well, yep, the yep. hackers are saying, well, gee, let's get it. Let's try and weave our way into these devices, and who knows what company we can look into. Yeah. And, uh, well, yeah, they still. Well, yeah, they're right. I mean, they they can't say make those claims anymore. But I think we'll still think they are safer than um, a Windows machine. Maybe. Now, <laughs> now, um, now off the Apple. We finished with Apple. Yeah, we're done. All right. Did you want to have any other stories there, or do you want me to keep well, going? I quite like. So you've got a, the same story. I quite like the um, the Kogan the Kogan story. <laughs> or two. <laughs> Well, you, you start off with him then. Oh, Kogan wages war on Internet Explorer. Users are taxed. Now, this, so, is, this is probably go a good... Oh, so funny. Yeah, this is probably this is good. a good thing. Like this, is, Oh, no, you can continue with the story. I'm just saying this is probably a good thing to, to help eradicate the, the crap that's out there. The crap, exactly. And, Microsoft. Well, it's not really Microsoft's fault. It's no, the uh, enterprises that refuse to pull their fingers out. Hmm. Um, so if you go into a Kogan website, It'll detect what browser you've got and what version it is. And if it's Internet Explorer 7, a little pop-up screen will come up and it reads, it appears you or your system administrator has been in a coma for over five years and you are still using IE7. To help make the Internet a better place, you will be charged a 6.8% tax on your purchase from Kogan. This is necessary due to the amount of time required to make web pages appear correctly in in said IE seven. Now wasn't wasn't uh, now it, it, hang on where is where's this story because it's quite entertaining. <laughs> it's the world the world first tax will be applied to all products on the Kogan.com website. Um, yeah, and as Eric said, because there's more work involved in in getting these things to render sites to render properly, you know, and especially on the old versions, you, you want to just you make make your website for the current version, you know, IE nine yeah. and blah yeah. blah blah. You, you know, like there's organisations out there still on I um, IE six. Can you believe it? So yeah, look, don't be was, surprised if the people are still running Windows ninety eight. Yeah, well, I suppose. They'd probably, Put your probably hand do. up, Lounge. <laughs> Windows 98, anyone? anyone? I, I don't know if they'd be able to access our website from Windows 98. It'd well, probably... that's true. Or is they running Flash 1.0? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to put a tax on it. Now, yeah. <laughs> now so this is, this is, this is, I think, look, this is enterprising, you know? I think it's, he's doing his bit for the, for the internet community as a whole. But, and, why... and if they don't upgrade, he gets extra money. That's right. And why wouldn't you upgrade? It's free. So Kogan, exactly. yeah. So he recently made the switch to IPv6. Has rational, rationalised that for every month since IE7 has been released, it has applied a 0.1 percent tax, now totaling 6.8 percent. Kogan said technology companies uh, such as itself should not be, have to unnecessarily spend money sustaining outdated technologies. Now, I've got another little. Now you've seen the little stop stop go photo that comes up when you when you if you got IE7. Yeah. Now here's how your your bill might look. There we go, the little IE tax down the bottom there. Good on him. Yeah, that's a new. He? Hey, actually, you know, he should um, he should hide that from Gillard because he might go, "Oh, there's a good idea. Let's just call yeah. it an, I, an IE tax and just yeah. tax everybody." Yeah, let, let's. Why not just build in build in a, a GST tax to all the browsers? So anyone yeah. doing e-commerce automatically GST has to be. Yes, yeah, so any browser across the board, GST. Hmm. But look, I, extra GST. <laughs> I, I look. I don't don't mind that idea. I think that's fair because, as you know, there's a lot of rubbish out there on the internet, and I've and just talking about rubbish. And I'll get, I've got a little story here if I can find it. Um, oh, Milo in the lounge just said his dad was running Windows ninety eight, but he's upgraded now to Windows XP. <laughs> <laughs> good. Oh, good, good. Windows ninety eight well version. Get with it. I'm glad. <laughs> version two. Now, just as a, as a uh, an idea of what there are nasties out there, Telstra trial detects five point four percent botnet infection rate. Telstra has what? yeah. Telstra Go has on. successfully trialed using using DNS poisoning to prevent botnets on the Big Pond network. Telstra was pleased by a trial of Nom Nominum's network protection system. And look, if you want to follow these stories up more, they're on the show notes on the off the page. So, uh, if we go too fast for you, 
or, you, or we don't make sense. But anyway, Telstra was pleased of a trial of the Nominum's network protection system, which used data to acquire domain names used by botnets to communicate with their motherships. The entire premise of this is to blacklist or poison uh, the domain names associated with the command and control service, Telstra explained. In the trial, Telstra looked at one million IP addresses on the big pond and found that 5.4% showed signs of being infected by a botnet. In the US, Comcast has admitted up to 15% infection rate, and in all of Australia, 10% of all fixed connections are infected by botnets and 5% Brilliant. on wireless. Brilliant. In a weekly repeated sightings report, the Australian Communications and Media Authority usually ports 5,000 to 6,000 infected IP addresses seen 10 or more times in a 14-day period. So, yeah, little botnets are there out there, and Telstra's trying to stamp them out. So good stuff. That's that's another. Well, at least someone's trying. That's another little, uh, little feel good if you're on the Big Pond network, isn't it? Yes, Can it I... is now. Speaking of botnets and things that give you the irrits, Skype ads. Oh. Skype ads. <laughs> Skype ads ads. Uh, oh mate, you're gonna add. So so you're on a you're on a video call, right? Just for example, if we we're, we're not we're on Google, using Google Hangout tonight for those on the audio. And but in the past we have used Skype, yep. video and audio. So, but if we ever do that in the future, here we are recording and we're capturing video, and Glenn's got capturing my video or I'm catching capturing his video for the for the video podcast. But in the future, as we're having our doing our podcast or whatever, a video ad will just pop up At that end. right in the middle, right in the middle of your conversation. <laughs> And but you know it's a benefit to us. That's what Why? they that's what they want you to believe. It's a benefit they're saying because the ads will pop up and they they you know what they actually called they called something like their their conversation starters. Oh, so give me a break! They'll give Who's... us they'll give us something oh. to talk about, Eric. It's it's a win. -win. Oh, it does. <laughs> it'll give me something to talk about. It'll make me want to punch my screen. That's what it'll give me something to talk about. Uh, we'll be saying, "Where's the off button?" <laughs> So Sky I'll just be click. Where's that X? You know, skip ad in in five seconds. You betcha. So Skype said. Skype said. Or Skype slash Microsoft said users will see content that could spark additional topics of conversation that are relevant. But not while I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> I'm just going to slag it off and give yeah. it a bad name. Yeah. Unless you want to give me a cut of your revenue from those ads while I'm doing my podcast. I know. I reckon all those ads, they should be paying us like rent for renting our eyeball looking time. Yes, that's, that's right. They should be doing. It's tiring my eyeballs and raising my blood pressure. It's wearing, wearing out my retinas. <laughs> that's right. All right. So, uh, so we'll go from that one. Now we'll go back up to sort of sticking with um, oh, the internet because why not? Now I've got, a ta not? I've got a table. I can show you the table. And we can start the story with Australian Banks University set sights on new top-level domains. Now, as you know, the uh, domain domain god has said, okay, you can have your uh, dot whatever you want, but it's going to come yep. at a price. But we want we want the submissions. Give us, give us, give us. So three of Australia's four banks, ANZ, and obviously yep. has has applied for pretty much their respective. Uh, act, um, Initials ANZ has applied for .ANZ, NAB has applied for .NAB, and UBank .UBank. Commonwealth Bank has applied for .NetBank, .ComBank, and .CBA. Geez, they must have a lot of money. Now, yeah, well, they have. <laughs> a number of Australian universities have also put in applications: Bond University .Bond, uh, La .Latrobe .Monash .RMIT, and uh, Open University Australia .Courses. Now, Broadcaster has SBS, .SBS, Australia Post, .Oz Post, .AMP, .Yellow Pages, .7, blah, blah, blah. list goes on. Look, and there is a, there is, I don't know how well that table's going to come out. It looks all right, though. There is a table. There's a table on the show notes. You can link, uh, link around. Now, yeah, there's quite a few there that have been, have been done. Melbourne, yep. Sydney, dot, you know, these are all preceded by dot. Uh, tab, T-A-B, Tennis, Webjet, Woodside. Yeah, physio. The banks should just. I thought the banks would be fighting over the domain um, dot ripoff. Well, oh yeah. Well, well someone well, you got to have 150 grand, I think, to do it, haven't you? But uh, yes. but apparently there, obviously there is a uh, 
bit of a, a, a brouhaha going on because obviously, say, Channel 7, they're not the only Channel 7 in the world. And obviously there's, there's application for Mother 7. So there's, there's apparently a... a uh, yeah, that's going to be. That's right. How are they going to handle that? Yeah, first well, in, best dressed, I suppose. Like, like in the in the old gold rush days of when the domains first came out. So worldwide, over ten per- <coughs> excuse me, worldwide, over ten percent of the applied for domains have more than one applicant, subjecting right. them to the ICANN's dispute resolution process. Now there is a link on the show notes if you want to be bored by that. Right. Uh, by reading right. that. Mm. Yeah, Bond, for example, someone on Wall Street might want that. Yeah. You know, book. Amazon would probably want that. Yeah, yeah, why not? You know, why not? I, now, yeah, well, yeah. Well, well, film. Well, Hollywood would want yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so while we're talking about... Uh, now, did, didn't I have one of those? Amazon? I had an Amazon story somewhere. Did you? I did, and here it is. Jeff Barr, Amazon's Jeff Barr, described there's a landmark number in vivid terms on the Amazon Web Services blog, which he claims, Amazon claims one trillion in simple storage devices, in simple storage service. So uh, that's 142 objects for every person on the planet or 3.3 objects for every star in our galaxy. Wow. So he wrote, if you could count one object per second, it would take you 31,000... 710 years to count them all. The company said it has made deleting files easier with its object expiration feature, which helps remove objects after a predefined time period and which has deleted more than 125 billion objects since its release at the end of 2011. So Amazon S3 ended 2011 with more than 762 billion objects stored, showing year-over-year growth of 192%. It's a lot, isn't it? I'm Gee. sure Google would have more objects than... Amazon, you reckon? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, well, Google Drive or Google Docs. Oh, just Google. The old Docs, as a they whole. probably would have. Yeah. But yeah, just Google, sort of like just Google as a bit of a hole. Yeah, but you know, you got to get in there and have that press release before anybody else, don't you? Well, hey? true. That's true. <laughs> That's true. All right. Well, we're going to have a little break. We're going to hear from Garth. Garth, come in and let me get him ready. Now, hopefully, uh, look, we, we, we've had a few comments through the week that the audio has been a bit soft on Garth and being a bit dodgy all around. So we quietly apologise for that. And hopefully, uh, Garth is going to be a bit louder tonight. So if if not, well, we'll have to continue working on it. But anyway, we'll, uh, we'll push you over to Garth, and we'll see you in a sec. Well, yes, it's Glenn and Garth back once again. Garth, you got a, you got a, yet another one. What I hope got? so, Glenn. I hope I've got another one. Um, this one is to do. Now... This is another one of these categories that are just inundated with apps. Mm. You've got a couple of them built into... I mean, the Reminders app is built in the phone already. Um, I was looking for a, a good app that... A good ta- you know, task manager, build list, that sort of thing, like a to-do style of app yep. um, that would also work on my Mac and would keep it all synced across between the iPhone, the Mac and the iPad. Yep. So whatever platform you're on, it's there. Um, must have downloaded 20 of them, some yeah, of those. Right. Yes. <laughs> um, this is the one I ended up sticking with. Probably it, it does have good um, – it uses either iCloud um, to sync the stuff between the devices or you yep. can have it hook up with Dropbox or I think they've got their own service as well. Yes. A few different ways you can have it sync anyway. Um, it had the one of the better terms – what I was looking to set up was a um, – recurring appointments with unusual like I didn't you know the default one gives you either every day every week or every month or every year that's it that your choices if you're not happy with that then too bad right whereas this one gives you a bit more customization in there yep um, so what does it what will it actually uh, sync with like does it sync with your Google account or is it only for um don't know I don't know if it actually will sync with the Google account with your Google account um, I don't typically use. I've never really used my Google Calendar that much myself. Right. Okay. I think this does. This is pretty much a self-contained um, project. It's it's somewhere between a basic reminder app and a full-fledged project management app. So you know your fully-fledged project management stuff, like you might get from the Omni Group. Yep. Where you're going to spend a a lot of money on. Yep. Um, Whereas this is this is not a free one. There's a lot of good free ones out there. 
this is sort of in between those two. So you've got a lot of the project style type of stuff where you can, anyone who's into getting things done or that style of, will know what I mean here, but um, so you've got a lot of, uh, so you can set up a project and under each project have sub categories um, with lists and check, mm. you know. Some of the, uh, now some of the the features as, as, as advised by the iTunes, by iTunes and yeah. we might have to say that this is a $5.49 download, yep. it's, not yep. a, it's not a freebie, but it's multiple reminder alerts, projects and checklist subtasks, password protection, landscape support. Um, repeating tasks, starred tasks, quick add entry tasks, uh, and the list goes on. Full calendar view for choosing due dates, drag and drop sorting, uh, contact email, SMS phone integration, GTD support for contents and tags, yeah, customizable app badge printing, iOS 4.2 plus required, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff there. Synchronization to do online, to do online iCloud sync. Yep. Dropbox, to, to, was that? To, Toodaloo. Toodaloo. Toodaloo is another... Um, and iCal yeah. free Wi-Fi required Outlook. So there you go. Good stuff. Yeah, it's it's one step, well, a couple of steps above a basic reminder app, I suppose. Mm. Um, yeah, Third it's really, really well done. Third-party apps, Notebook, Google Reader, Gas Cubby, and more. There you go. So Good stuff. So I'll just those ones as well, yeah. All right. Yeah. Good work, Garth. See you next right. week. Good night. Cheers. All right, to do. Have you heard of that one, Eric? To do? No, I haven't. Oh. No, I haven't. No. Oops. Yep. You can hear me. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, I haven't heard that one. Yeah. So uh, Garth, uh, he trolls around the uh, the app store, and that's what he comes up with—all these little goodies every week. So good on you, Garth. All good right. On you, Garth. Now, where are we off to from here? We normally do an audible. Did you have an audible this week? I do. I did it last minute. Um, right. Or we can just, just do, do we a quick one. Air. Or we can just do a quickie. We can do a quick one now. This one, let me just go to my notes. Um, well, I'll do a little story before we do that. Go on. Yeah, go on. I'll go to Twitter passwords leaked. Now, all a big hoo-ha in the in the heading, which is not really the case at all. But uh, just that it's a it's a grabber. It's a headline grabber. So use, but it's it's sort of half true. But username and passwords of Twitter members using file application TweetGIF have been leaked to the internet by a group of hackers. So as far as I can gather, only if you were a member of TweetGIF, GIF, TweetGIF, have did you have your username and password for TweetGIF leaked? Okay. Right. Um, so so this is, so TweetGIF was apparently some sort of service that allowed you to post animated gifs onto Twitter. So Lolsec Reborn uh, has apparently posted 10,000 personal details of TweetGIF users, including real names and locations. A spokeswoman for Twitter said TweetGIF's use of authorization protocol OAuth meant none of its passwords were exposed. So thank you. Twitter's stable and secure. Uh, Twitter's gone on to say, we can confirm that all Twitter account passwords have remained secure. No breach of our systems have occurred in connection with the uh, events experienced by TweetGIF. Uh, there we go. So Twitter, she's, yeah. she's all secure. So that's good. All right. Okay. Now, now so I came across this at the last minute. Sounded okay, but then I listened to a little bit, and it's, it's quite an intellectual book, hmm. but... It's what it's called. It's called Modern Times, The World from the 20s to the 90s. Right. Named one of the best books of the year in 1983. So it'll give you a good perspective on what they thought was going to happen in the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> That's how, how far off they are. Um, this fast-paced, all-encompassing narrative covers of narrative history covers the great events, ideas, and personalities of the six decades following the end of World War I. Ooh, okay. In May 1919... Um, yeah, so the critics say, you know, blah, 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 it's a good book, truly really distinguished work of history, etc. So I thought I'll give it a little shot, and I actually might get this one, and we'll see how we go. All right. Professor of Astronomy and Secretary of the Royal Astronomical Society. Eddington publicised Einstein's achievement in a 1918 paper for the Physical Society called Gravitation and the Principle of Relativity. But it was of the essence of Einstein's methodology that he insisted his equations must be verified by empirical observation, and he himself devised three specific tests for this purpose. 
the key one was that a ray of light just raised from the surface of the sun must be bent by 1.745 seconds apart, twice the amount of gravitational deflection provided for by classical Newtonian theory. All right. Good honour. Is that it, Nadia? Oh, we've lost Eric. Nadia's gone. Eric's gone. Come in, Eric. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh, 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 here we go. Oh, sorry, mate. Oh, 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 sorry. Oh, oh, oh. Nadia was Nadia was just blew me away. <laughs> yeah, she sounded all right too. Oh, Nadia, modern times, the world from the 20s to the 90s. <laughs> that's right. So so Eric thought that uh, that's my, could be a gal for him. So he, he, you might get that yep. in your monthly subscription. Not for, it's not for everybody, but for you out people out there who like a bit of intellectual, that's uh, probably a good one. All right. So if you want to get that book for free and you haven't joined Audible yet, you can go to the aussietechheads.com.au website, click on the banner, join up to Audible through the banner on the front of the page or on most of the pages there, join up and uh, get that one for free. Keep it forever. Never, never, never let it go. Listen to it day and night. Listen to Nadia's soothing English tones day in, day out, night in, night out. And, um, yeah, good stuff. All right. Uh, where are we? So that's the Audible. And now, oh, listen, I can, I can have another story. I've got another. Did you have any more stories? Uh, you go ahead. I, I have got a few, but there's so many pages, it's very hard for me to look through it. Right, you need all. formatting on those stories. <laughs> Get away! <laughs> now, um, uh, where are we here? We've got a, We'll do a few, couple of quick ones. I've uh, got about uh, fifteen minutes to go. Microsoft—they're going to charge ninety-five dollars for their Windows RT. So Windows RT is the the version of Windows Eight that's going to go onto tablets. Good uh, luck! No one's going to buy it. Yes, Microsoft intends to charge manufacturers eighty to ninety-five US for each copy of RT. Um, blah blah blah, which is up against obviously competitive with devices running Google f- free Android. Uh, sales of mobile devices, smartphones, and tablet computers outselling traditional desktop PCs. Microsoft is in danger of losing market re- relevance unless it can become a major player in tablets and smartphones. Look, I think that is absolutely true. They are in danger, but whether or not charging for their software is gonna do it. Um, like, like when what you break, just, why don't they just charge twenty dollars for it? Hmm. Yeah, because it's yeah. not that good. They can start charging ninety five dollars. It's more expensive than, um, what's called Mountain Lion, and mm. and I'm sure Mountain Lion it craps all over it. So why don't you just sell it for twenty dollars? Mm. Because I was going to say, like, you might say, well, okay, well, you know, Android's free, and you know, well, and Apple, well, who knows? It's all the one company, so it, it's there's no price on it, but. Uh, you well, know. there is. There is an internal price on it because they still do R and D. Yeah. And if they were to actually want to recover all their R and R and D and price it correctly, um, they would um, be charging a lot more than thirty dollars for that. But right. what they're trying to do is think, well, no, you buy our hardware and we'll throw in a software for free. Yeah. And that's how we get our money back. Yes. Yeah. So I think, uh, look, Microsoft. I think. Oh, I don't know. Are they just old school? You know, they're just they're just going. You know, like they've done with Skype. They've just got to find some revenue, some straightforward old school revenue stream. The problem is, up. I think that this, a lot of the same people that were there twenty five years ago, and who were young and hip back then, and actually quite innovative and go go and entrepreneurial, well, they've all got older, and it's yeah. not a young man's company anymore. You know, and at the leadership level, anyway, there's a lot of probably young minions, but some of these younger people have got to be yeah. pushed up to leadership and decision making, yeah. um, creative or entrepreneurial positions, because you've still got Steve Ballmer there, and you know, he just doesn't know when to leave. No, he's sort of you hanging know, around at like a bad At least smell. Bill Gates knew, right? It's time for me to go. I'll leave it in better hands. Mm. But he left it with a bloke who was just it was older than him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm not sure, you know, but I don't know what the answer is. I haven't really sat down and really wanted to think too much about it. But like with Skype, what are you going to do with Skype? How, what's the revenue stream with Skype? Obviously, you've got to have something. But I suppose maybe you just license it out as integrations into like, it. the Facebook it. and all that sort of stuff. Pay you as you go. Um, do you have you know, to have make... Little, have discreet advertising. Is, does it have you know, to... Like Google, like Google Hangout. Th- yeah, yeah, that's right. Does it have to be a product that makes you $100 billion a year? Does it have to be yeah. that? No. Well, okay. look at it, put it this way. Look at it this way. Google 
has got Google Search and they've got Google Hangout. Well, Microsoft have got Bing. Skype yeah. can be their version of Google Hangout. Well, yeah, that's right. The two go together. Yeah, but you know, like so, the... I don't understand why. You know, why do they need? Why does Skype need to be a standalone piece of software? Why can't it be like Google Hangout and be integrated into Bing, for example? Well, you know, with you know how many people would go to Bing now that that would drive so much mm. traffic to Bing because there's a squillion Skype users out there. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then they can really compete with Google. You know what? They should hire me. That's a free idea, guys, <laughs> you morons. Yeah, and you've heard it here once again on the Aussie Tech Ed. Jeez. Microsoft, um, listen to Get that. Get with it. Now, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it just seems a bit crazy. But uh, but anyway, that's that's the way they want to run their ship, so that's the way it's going to go. Look, I think that the Microsoft tablet is going to, is going to work. I've got faith in it. Uh, it's probably something I'd probably want to look at. So you're you're the one person that's going to buy their tablet. No, oh, half a person. I'm only thinking about it. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like why wouldn't it? You know, like it's going to integrate. Well, hang on. Maybe I might jump the gun. I was going to say integrate seamlessly. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> be careful. Maybe I won't go that far. Maybe be I'll careful. say um after. Remember, Xbox doesn't integrate into anything yet. Like Apple TV integrates into iTunes and everything just sort of click, click, click. Well, in two you think th- they've had Xbox a lot longer than in, Apple TV's been out and it integrates into nothing. In 2030, after the 10th version of the software comes out, it might integrate seamlessly. But, um, mm-hmm. but until then, maybe we should hold off. But no, look, I think it'll, I think it'll work. I think it'll, it's, it's good. But the, as you said, like Google's primarily advertising revenue base. That's where it's obviously getting all its money from. And, you know, like... So is Bing, though. So is Bing. Well, okay. Well, I'll put this to you. Do you know how hard it is? And you probably never looked, but I've Googled. I've, I've done a fair bit of, well, you know, Googling, as much as research as you can just by Googling. Maybe I'm not yeah. looking for the right terminology. I don't know. But I've spent a lot of time just trying to, say, um, get into the Microsoft Ad Network to display ads on a web page. I can see how to, to like, um, if I want my ads to appear on Bing, yes, there's, there's heaps of pages for Microsoft to do that. But how, how as a web page publisher, do you display their ads? Is it, yeah. is it a closed system uh, dedicated to Bing and 9MSN? Is Maybe. This? I think it might Maybe. be. You can't get onto it. You, can, you can't. It's not like the AdSense program. You know where you can just lo- lob in and sign up and 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 uh, get suspended and never to be unseen again. <laughs> yeah, this is Bing Microsoft Ad Center. Let's go straight to Bing. Yeah, but you can't you can't be a publisher and publish their ads. <laughs> so I don't know mm. what the story is there, but uh, but anyway, that's just my little my little beef because I looked updates. I suppose I'll give you an update. I suppose a month ago went to the fair training about my suspension from the AdSense network. And they sent a letter back saying then that they weren't going to reinstate me because of invalid click activity. But look, I can. Yeah, who would have been doing that though? Did you do you make any enemies with people? No. Look, I I would think that like looking back and trying to think why this has happened. Uh, look, maybe I, I was running Joomla on the website for the web page. I, I downloaded a, a module to uh, to uh, be the ad ad server plugin thing. So unless that had malware inside it. That somehow just just or just a just a funny configuration. Yeah, because look, I never clicked. I, maybe I clicked on five, you know, but there's no way I sat there click 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 clickety clicks. So yeah. I was um I still don't look clickety click 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 <laughs> clickety hickety hick click click. Now look, I I've got the option for I think thirty seven bucks. I can actually take him to a tribunal. I think I'm going to do it. Because I'm not thirty-seven dollars. Yeah, I do it. Yeah, because I'm not entirely, you know, jumping. You know what? You know what I think. The burden of proof is on them to prove that you did it. Now they've they would have all the records of who was clicking and what IP address that yeah. was coming from. Well, so, they, I think front they, up. I think they did send me a, a well via the fair trading. They did send a, a note and they said, yeah, invalid click activity come from my IP or whatever. But look, if that's the case, it's obviously got something to do with a bit of malware. In the in the programming that I was using, it must it must have been, um, mm. but 
Yeah, but anyway, I'm not. Wasn't uh, totally excited. But look, I actually started looking into because the, the you know, can I start another account? Is is it just that account that's disabled, or if I start another account, are they going to match my name and go, uh huh, here he is well, again? Well, actually, I, they, you've got a different IP address now, so you might be right. Yeah. So anyway, look, right. I'm going to look in to see if I can transfer my Gmails across to another Gmail account. And well, pretty much Gmail is the only thing keeping me at this old account because I've got the whole history, you know. I've got five yes, years or yeah. something there. So, yeah, right. Um, I probably could also, oh, I don't know. I think it, I'll sort it out. But anyway, what, what else have you got there, Eric? Anything, um, anything else? Uh, just one last thing, my last one. Um, the new MacBook Pro has two lightning bolt plugs. Right. Um, two USB 3 plugs. Wow. Port. Yep. Um, it's thinner than the current. It's about two-thirds the thickness of the current MacBook Pro. So it's quite thin yep. and very light. Only weighs, I think, a kilo and a half, yeah, which right. is pretty good. Mm. But but there is no Ethernet port or Ooh. DVD. Uh, Ethernet port, no, nah, I don't think you need it. No. Uh, well, if you're going to do like we do, you'll need it. But the thing is, they sell it's a laptop. Um, lightning bolt to Ethernet port adapters. Yeah. So that's yeah. all right. Yeah. So that's you just right. plug that into your lightning bolt adapt, uh, port, yeah. plug your Ethernet cable, you're sweet. And yeah. that's gigabit speeds, so that's all right. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, so that'll that, do. Yeah, 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 that'll do. Yeah, but no CD, that doesn't, that's not a drama for me. That's no, me neither. CD, that's... don't really care no, about th- that. CD. Ethernet port is a bit worried. But then when they said, oh, well, it plugs into your gig, gig in it, into your lightning bolt port, I thought, yeah, well, that'll do. Who uses CD today? Anyway? Thunderbolt. There we go. Light, not lightning bolt. Th- sorry, Frosty. Thunderbolt. How, yeah. um, how, how often do you use a CD today? I don't use oh. it. Oh, and it's got an HDMI port too. Yes, thanks, Frosty. That's right. Yeah, nice. HDMI port. Also, plug it straight into your TV. Beautiful. Yeah, it's nice. And probably, what, AirPlay? And it all does all that as well. So yeah. you don't, even if you don't use HDMI... Mm. Airplay to Apple TV straight up. I want to try. I want to get the Spotify on the Airplay. That'd be good. Actually, that's interesting. I've never tried that. Yeah, I think there's a there's a little bit of a software. Just Google it. It's come across it. There is a little uh, Spotify a little software bit thing hanging around that will do that. But now my last story for tonight is 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 Vocus. Now, you've never heard of these guys, because neither had I. But anyway, that Vocus lays cross-harbour fibre. A data centre and telecommunications provider, Vocus, has V-O-C-U-S, has laid two new fibre link across, <clears throat> across Sydney Harbour in a bid to decrease, to decrease connection latency between the city's financial district and the recently opened ASX data centre in Gore Hill, north of the bridge. So obviously they're worried about what, what would that be, like a point... Point one of a point oh 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 one of a second ping or something. Jeez, a total of one point six kilometres of armoured fibre was laid from Dawes Point in Sydney CBD to Milsons Point and from Dawes Point to Blues Point. Focus Chief Executive, no one point six k. Focus Chief Executive Officer James Spencelli said the links were four hundred metres shorter than existing links, so they're four hundred metres shorter. And, the, and mm. between the CBD and the ASX liquidity centre, thus transmitting data microseconds faster. How much data Gee, I tell must you what, they You're have? really desperate for that for that share sale, aren't you? Yeah, I reckon. And and the project was seven months in the making. So now I've got a picture here. <laughs> I thought I thought the funny the funny part of this was seven months in the making. Couldn't they have started planning in the winter so this poor guy didn't have to jump in the oh, harbour? Yeah, it looks, <laughs> looks like it looks like Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> it does a bit, doesn't it? He's going to swear in a minute. <laughs> he probably jumps in and he goes, "Oh, it's eating cold." <laughs> cool, are you stupid! <laughs> Start swearing at you. Yeah, so I thought I thought that was funny, you know. Obviously, the people who started planning had no no thought about someone had to jump in the water in the middle of winter. <laughs> See yeah. The harbour. Yeah. There you go. Maybe there's less sharks in the cold. I don't know. Probably. You wouldn't feel them when you, they bite your legs off. All right. Oh, now, Frosty, well done. Now, no thanks, mate. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to read that. All right. Oh, the, the, the banter that goes on in the lounge chat room, I tell you. I tell you, you got to see it to believe it. Stuff that can't be repeated. 
No, can't be repeated. We won't be repeating it here on no. air. <laughs> no. Uh, all right. Now uh, that's the end of the show. You got any more stories, Eric? No, I'm. I am done. You're done. Stick a fork in you. Stick a fork. He is done. All right. Now, so yep. The, as I said before, the footy competition tip and comp still going. Uh, oh, I didn't ask Eric where he was coming. Do you know where you're coming? Or you, oh, look, you I gave up. up. I, just got, I got bored with the whole thing. You but started, last week, you I haven't done losing. it for probably seven weeks. <laughs> and then last week, I got an email saying, well done, you picked four out of five. I'd never touched it. <laughs> yeah, right. You, oh, but well you, done. You must, get, you must automatically get away games. Oh, maybe. maybe. I don't know. Maybe don't that's know. how it worked. I don't know. I don't know how it was. Who cares? But anyway, there it is. Uh, so if you want to join the footy comp, well, it's a bit late, but if you want to have a look at it, it's, uh, there's a link off the web front page of the web page. So it's aussietechheads.com.au. Uh, to find Eric on the Twitter, you're at Eric, he's at Eric Franco, Eric with a K, E-R-I-K, Franco. Um, yes. F-R-A-N-C-O. C-O, that is, right. And Will, wherever Will is fixing batteries, hope none blown up in his face. He's at Mr. Tomkinson, and I'm at Aussie Tech Heads. And or you can get him at batteryacidburnonmyface.com. <laughs> and you can also get us all on emails, Glenn, Will, or Eric at aussietechheads.com.au. And Garth, for that matter. Garth at aussietechheads.com.au. Uh, we're everywhere. We're everywhere. So uh, if you've got a if you've got a, a, a podcast or a podcast, drop me a line, and we might be able to replay it before the show as well. We'll line them all up before yes. the, before the before the start of Aussie Tech Heads, because uh, I want to want to try and stay because we've got the the live stream just play stuff twenty four seven. So if you've got a tech podcast or or maybe any anything for that matter, if you think um yeah you'd want to you want to submit it into the the channel network, let's try and make a little station out of it, eh? So if you've got something like that, let's do that. Uh, the yes. radio is coming back. So if you've got a ra- if you've got an audio podcast, get in touch with me. The radio is coming back and it's going to be uh, good. We're going to try and get a, a lot of content and we're going to try and play, yeah, just different content all day long. So And it won't just be tech related. It'll be just, you know, just a bit of everything. A bit of everything. Yep, very good. All right. So until next week, I uh, hope you all have a good week. Hope it all is sunny and war- as warm can be. And until then, Eric, have a good week. And uh, See you, Glenny. See you next week. Uh, chewing the fat on next. Give me, give me 10 minutes and we're back. All right. So Chewing the Fat. Oh, yes. We've, we've got to mention that just before we go. Chewing the Fat. iTunes. Search for Chewing the Fat or YouTube. Chewing the Fat. Uh, Eric's show uh, with me. And, yeah, we just discuss what whatever we pretty much like. The Pretty frustrations much. of the week, we should call it. That's right. So download that, have a bit of a laugh along with us, and 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 maybe a giggle. All right. Till next week. It's bye for now. Ta-da. See you guys. <laughs>